now more than ever, we need to remember. We all need to take a deep breath. We are Americans. We are passionate in what we believe in. And that's okay. But the division is boiling over and the situation is proof of it. Things have gone too far. Ask yourself, is this the future you see for your country? Violence, assassinations. I know it's not what I want. We need to remember each other as more than right and left. We are all children of the same cloth. Don't lash out in anger. Don't resort to or wish for violence. Bloodlust solves nothing. Be the difference you want to see. And do it with dignity. Show people who we are as a people. Welcome to the 2400 Block Podcast with your hosts, Johnny Rubes and Ken. Podcast spin, intelligence binge watch. Johnny Rubes with the wisdom, never botch. Dark thoughts, ventilate, handy, great knowledge. 2400 crew, like Griffin College. Clever minds unite, discussions land tight. Sync up thoughts, intertwine, never bark, trite. Mics up, lights down, we the crew profound. Johnny Rubes know the truth, bomb is going round. Catchy beats, the block that never sleeps. 2400 sound in your brain it creeps. Catchy sounds, the block that never bounds. 2400 toss the substance out of sound. Catchy beats, the block that never sleeps. 2400 yeah, yeah. sound in your brain it creeps. Catchy sounds, the block that never bounds. 2400 toss the substance out of sound. Hey guys, it's us, you know, Johnny Rubes and Ken. Doing our thizzle as usual, and what we do best, if you guys didn't already know, is we're digital media um, extraordinaires, specifically yes, today, photography. Um, it's it's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this podium. Take this compliment because it's you deserve it. Um, ever since I've known Rubes, he's been a creative extraordinaire. So I. I uh, blogs, graphic design before he even gone to school because he has a bachelor's in graphic design. Oh, I wish I had a bachelor's. <laughs> well, it's a it's an associate. Lie to him. Learning nothing. Lie, uh... lie, <laughs> lie. That's what they do in the employment industry world. Anyway, people lie today. Yeah. These days, they just lie. But anyways, you gotta we, get yourself you got, out there somehow. You got the actual skills to back it up, so wouldn't no one would know the difference anyway. But when you you know, throughout the time and, and years, I would look at your stuff and I think to myself, you know, I've been more of a person involved in the family world. So I didn't really know what I needed or wanted, but creative, creative energy was it. But when you, when I would see your stuff, I'm like, wow, that's cool. And I think those are some of the first times where it inspired me to like take my creative energy and like do the the faux, I call it po poetry, poetography. Poetography, just yeah. Poetography. Yeah. Poetography. <laughs> poetography. It's not a term, but I mean. Uh, yeah, we're going to create the word. Tonight. You know what? I'm E40. I can create slang, you know. Uh -huh. Potography. Ooh, <laughs> tell them where to go. Um, But yeah, so I, I did a lot of that stuff and paint, you know, mm. before there was. <laughs> Photoshop and all these things where you can actually have layers. I would set it up and I I would hope because you only had one shot. If you yeah. cemented everything, you don't you're done. You have to go do another one and you know bring it in and all that stuff. But yeah, but what it did, if you remember paint, it forced you to make precise moves because there weren't layers. There weren't a undo button <laughs> <laughs> so you if you put that on there and the word is the and you put th uh -huh. yeah you're gonna have to redo or this is what i would do i would yeah. trick it i would um you know how in editing where you 
clone. You clone uh-huh. a spot. I, I would clone that spot and reclone it, and then I would, I would find the right E and put it right in there. Oh, that's that's how I started my original editing, the uh-huh. artisan way, the like the the cast. You know, you make a sword the blacksmith style, where you're you're fine tuning the edit because you don't have that tool before mm-hmm. they had all those tools. So I think that's why my editing skills um, had a little bit of an edge when I got into actual um, digital media. So, I mean, but this session today, Odo Jam, yeah. photography, specifically judgment, the judgment section of photography. <laughs> but in this case, it's not judgment. It's more of a, like a, a look into your photography from another person's perspective and giving some feedback on it, period, not more in a judgmental way, more in an um, inquisitive way. So I love yeah. that we have Molly back. Yeah. And for for you guys who are just uh, tuning in, I want you guys to go back to episode 0423. That is the uh, oh, previous episode that we had with Molly. There you go, Ken. Thanks for the visual there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For you know, for the visually, you know, and, and hearing, yeah. and, well, actually, just visually, um, or I guess hearing, yeah, yeah, I guess would be hearing. My bad. I, I have, I'm ADA, but as far as the physical aspects, that that's you know, technically, I have auditory processing disorder, and we yeah. went over that in the, in a dissociation um, episode. But um, yeah, zero four two three, Molly Schlatner, right? Schlachter. Schlachter. Yeah, from. Langster, <laughs> Langster, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> From Lang, Lan- yeah, it is. Yeah, Lan- that's how she Lancaster. said it. Yeah, Lancaster. Lancaster. Yeah, yeah. So there's Lan. Well, I will say it that way because that's literally <laughs> a re verb reverbage for me to say it that way. Mm-hmm. But although there's there's Norfolk, Virginia, it's Norfolk, Norfolk, yeah. Virginia. So I still say Norfolk. I, I rep. I rep. How did they say Norfolk? The Sometimes some people say Norfolk. You know, that's what I, I if was someone ever was tells kid. me Norfolk, Virginia, I'll be like, <laughs> you're, you're from California, aren't you? OK, I am, too. But yeah. I went to I, I my Navy career started in Norfolk, Virginia, <laughs> in the south. <laughs> we say Norfolk. Yeah. And the first time I met you was actually at uh, Mike's home back then in Norfolk. Yes. I mean, Norfolk, Norfolk. <laughs> Dang, good memory, bro. That's yeah, exactly I, I, where I, everything started for us Navy guys. Well, we started we in Mike and We ooh, got ooh, Molly ooh, now. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Here we go. So the Jim Molly, are you there? In the, in the building. Hello. We are back. Molly. <laughs> Molly. Here we go. We got the uh the fourth one uh coming on. We got <laughs> Katie Joy. Here we go. Katie Joy, another KJ. All right. <laughs> oh, hey, you're a KJ too. Wow. Yes. Hi. I never use the initials because, you know, I can, you know, people didn't know how to say my name. So they said Ken. And more recently, I was like, you know what? It should be Johnny Rubes and KJ. But I was like, you know what, Ken? <laughs> it's been Ken. So KJ, we'll give it to. Hello, KJ. What is the, what is, what is the initials again? I'm sorry. I want to be Molly and KJ. Molly and KJ. <laughs> Molly and KJ. Yeah. I don't see a picture or a that video. That sounds like uh, Molly. Feed. What? Is is uh, Molly? Uh, I don't see her um, her video feed. I do. On my end, I see Molly. I just got a thing that said my internet is unstable. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that depressing right away? Your your session is going to be challenging. Just letting you know. <laughs> I I don't usually have an unstable connection. Am I okay? Uh, so far you're you're, you're streaming you're okay. on my end, and I'm, I'm recording. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah the D, the DJ sees the whole floor, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like I had such a great time with you all the last time. Oh yeah. And yes. it I feel like. I just feel so comfortable. I was talking to KJ. She said, are you nervous? I was like, not with these guys. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. Okay, so the reason why it's that way is because this is how we've been since we've known each other. We're just, yeah. it's the block in my mind is a place where you come and you just, 
you're you. You don't come there with no PC, no mask. You just come as yourself. And if hold you're up, not. Hold up. What is <laughs> block? Now tell me about 24 block or 2400 block. Johnny Rubes. Okay. That's your floor. This is well, your. Yeah. Floor. I'm going to just refresh you guys. Uh, I'm not sure if I brought it up on the last episode, but the 2400 block was a block that I grew up in my neighborhood. And I in was in Chicago. A, Actually, in Norfolk, Virginia. Born and raised on the uh, playgrounds no, not, where not he born. spent most of his day. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> not born there, but raised. I was born in Japan. Uh, long story. Uh, my dad I was in the Navy. I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. You're Japanese, technically. <laughs> that would be cool. Dual citizenship. But Dual citizenship. Uh, yeah, the 2400 block is a block where I grew up on. I was about maybe seven or eight. And I gotten to, you know, learn things. And I've decided to take that name, uh, use it as a podcast. That was the only name that came to mind, by the way. And it's just like me learning as a kid, learning people, learning things, learning whatever is out there. And I decided to now make it into this uh, platform here uh, that you guys are seeing now. And I welcome you guys aboard. And then Kendrick and then Kendrick takes it to the level of um, I, I add the addition of mental health and and individuality and and expression of who you are, not what you have to be for everybody else. Yeah. I mean, I for the record, I'm hinging on an autistic diagnosis. So um, masking is a big part of my life. So this is a place where you can come and just be yourself. And photography is we're digital media people. So photography is is a joy for us so this is amazing so that's why it's so fun this is a fun <laughs> platform to have photography on come on yes <laughs> yes i love it i feel so lucky that photography is what i do for a living and every day i'm like i can't believe people give me money <laughs> <laughs> wow i received a check in the mail like I can't days. believe it. I was like, this was so much fun. This is so much fun. All I do it all day long is so much fun. And I just can't ple- believe that I'm so lucky. <laughs> no, it, it, it's an amazing thing, honestly, um, because you can imagine for all photographers out there who's gone to school and they're going to become uh, the next, I don't know, there's, there's so many photographers out there are amazing. And because it's such a saturated social media, digital media world, everybody's clicking a button and making a picture. And we forget that the artisans out there yeah. know how to bend light to another whole another level. Mm-hmm. But the good thing about that is that your work is going to be seen regardless of the saturation. So this we got to remember out there as photographers, oh, yeah. your skill is your conscious brain recording light. So don't ever discount your photography for something saturated. So Molly, honor, KJ, honor. So what I think is interesting, I don't know. I think we're all in different corners of the country right now. Oh, wow. I don't know where you are, Kendrick. California, Redlands, California. Wow. The light looks very California on your screen. <laughs> like it is bright, it is happy. It's you know daytime. the whole, you know the whole great thing that's going on in the interior design. That's what I got going on. Just it's balance. It's a navy thing with gray, sh- gray. No. <laughs> and I got my trucker hat on. Um, you saw the photos I sent, so I had to represent. Ten, bring the same ten shirt. Ten four, good buddy. Ten four, good buddy. <laughs> Ten four, buddy. Ro- over and out. Roger that, Ghost Rider. That's- There's a photographer on Instagram. Speaking of like really big digital media photographers, who's a really fantastic photographer, but he's also a truck driver, uh-huh. and he kills it. Like he takes his photos on the. Have you seen him, Molly? I don't know, but I'm. I'll Ken- have Ken- Ken's a I'll truck have to truck, find right? it. Ken drives a truck. Yeah, he used to drive a truck. Oh yeah, me. Okay, I was like, I thought we were talking about the other guy. <laughs> uh-huh. No, we're talking about I, the other guy, but I haven't seen this guy. I think that's brilliant. My my, my the majority. I started photography like officially uh, going to school in 2013. My career as a truck driver started two years after that because my story was I shot. This is a, it's not sad, but it's sad to me. I I called myself shooting for a uh, the Lafayette Hotel over in San Diego. 
Mm-hmm. And it's a it's a uh, cliche. It's not cliche. It's a niche hotel because it's a landmark over there in San Diego. And it's kind of 40s, 50s themed. So mm-hmm. you got a lot of different people from the olden days in there. And I love the setup. So I found the marketing person and convinced them to let me shoot for their New Year's Eve from 2014 going to 2015. Mm-hmm. And I called myself using a backup drive to save all the stuff. But a backup drive is a drive backed up to a first drive. <laughs> I end up dropping that Seagate 5 gig on the ground and I could not recover the files. I I, I felt so horrible that, and I shot some great shots. I and mean, we were talking about some great oh. shots. And I, And you know how when you shoot something, you knew that you got, you know how you shoot 100 shots and only yeah. 20, maybe yeah. 10. It was like 100 and like 60, 70 of them were good. And I was like, I, I literally apologize to the marketing manager and everybody forgive me, but you know, I'm a person, I'm a perfectionist. So I was like, wow. But the good thing about that is that um, it allowed me to move, you know, I didn't get, you know, get paid every time photographer, even though I tried to go that route, but I end up going into the trucking world and taking all those skills and documented a whole trucking journey. And because trucking is a very savage industry, it did, drain my energy and I kind of backseated photography, but diving into this photography, these two sessions, because I did bring some from the last session in in trucking, has been therapeutic for me because I have been able to go back in time and actually look at a whole journey. I call it Operation Big Big Rig Racks is what the name of my photo journey was. So it's been a pleasure to be able to go back like this and then, and then, revisit the you know the critique forum so this has been awesome this is fun it was fun last time so okay kj last time we were on for over two hours yes. just look like <laughs> two hours and, and 11 like, minutes two hours <laughs> <laughs> but this i know i thought my eyeballs were gonna Lots. fall out <laughs> looking at pictures that long but i said to johnny why don't i let me take the reins a little bit and let me give you the authentic photo jam experience. There we go. So we're going to do yes. a jam. We're going to do a photo jam. And for those of your listeners out there who don't know what photo jam is, I, KJ, do you want to describe it? So the way KJ. I describe it is like, it's like a, a book club. Cause that's uh-huh. the vibe of it. Like you have a bunch of people who are just awesome and they just want to talk about a form of art and there's not a lot of pressure, but instead of like looking at other people's photographs that are not in the group, you're bringing your own. So it's like a mix of a book club or like a writing group where you're bringing your own stuff, but you're kind of workshopping it. Like nothing has to be a final product. Like it can be something mm-hmm. that you've been working on mm-hmm. and we use awesome. a lot. Yeah. A lot of supportive, um, critiquing versus like what people hear when they what they think when they hear critique is like really negative and tearing yeah. down photographs but like really pulling out your strengths and working on those and helping people understand like when when you see a photograph what are you looking at what are the elements in it why do you like it and like how do you talk about that so i think that's what's super important and i think we grow a lot more when we have that supportive environment to really like talk about it and feel safe bringing unfinished products into the room yeah exactly. kj i i um i'm glad you brought the more balanced version up in its detail because my version of the critique world is a um if you're familiar with this the art center pasadena my teacher was an alumni so it was the opposite <laughs> it was we call it the yeah. morally barometer because we had to use those trifectas of the ISO, the shutter speed, and the f-stop. And then we got to take the composition and we had to, it, it was not, he would not say bad things, but he would not necessarily kind things. And it wasn't workshop. It was more like, you have to get what I'm looking for, for this critique in that split second. And we just, we were, you were either going to, one girl cried on one of these critiques. So this is a more, 2024 version, just like we're in a world where everybody is accepted for what they do and bring. That was good for me. And I had to actually kind of bring myself out of that because I 
tend to be a little bit more perfectionist because of that. So it's actually good. But before we dive in, just a little bit about you guys from people who didn't that watch and people who are new to watching. A little bit about us? Yeah, about you um, and about KJ. I mean, we want to know who you guys are. Well, Photo Jam. Yeah, well, I just want to add on to what KJ said. Photo Jam is something that was born in COVID and has grown and grown in its format a, a lot, a lot. So I started I started the photo jam. I am Molly Schlachter and I live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And now it used to be just dropping in and sharing photos. Now it's kind of expanded to journeys. And we did a elements of design journey where we went through all the elements of design in our photography. And now we're in an abstract photography journey. So we're delving into some really cool abstractions in, in Photo Jam. So I guess that's, yeah. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure if I answered the question, what's about me. But yeah, I'm Molly. And I'm, I'm dialing in from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And... KJ. Hey, KJ. KJ. Yeah, I'm KJ. I am dialing in from the Bronx. Um, the Bronx, the Bookie Bronx. Yes. Yes. Oh. Dialing in from the Bronx. So if you hear some ice cream trucks or something in the background, <laughs> just ignore it. Um, our neighborhood the bodega. <laughs> is very lively here. Um, I, I told Molly I wouldn't go into this very much, but my background is not, I, I mean, I do photography and I've been doing it for a really long time, but I'm not a professional. Well, I don't do it for money, I guess, when I say not professional photographer, but I don't do it for money. It's not my career. Uh, I work in the mental health sphere, actually. I mm. um, am in psychiatry, and I will put a asterisk disclaimer. Anything that I say is my opinion and my own. I'm not anybody's <laughs> doctor on here, um, but I am still currently Love in it. training. That is um, the, yes, that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm currently in my in a forensic psychiatry fellowship and just finished a child psychiatry fellowship so I'm a little bit a little bit all over the place but I came to to photo jam um when I was in re residency and it was a really hard time and I just needed a place to have a creative outlet and like a really supportive community that was outside of the medical system mm -hmm. and this has been it for me and it's also really pushed me to work hard like these journeys are no joke Molly you did a good job with them like I'm working my butt off trying to do these assignments in the best way possible <laughs> they're really pushing my boundaries and and helping me really explore some new topics in photography so I am really thankful for it yay yay yeah, KJ, you brought up another good point with um, labeling yourself. As you, some people don't want to label some photographer because they don't get paid. If you record light and it actually <laughs> shows up on a screen as something, it's a photo, you are officially a photographer. Yep. So you don't have to get paid. So that's a very good point for people to know is you don't have to be ashamed because you don't get paid for it. So that's that's um. Yeah. And very, fun. very important. Photo Jam yeah. has people coming in, shooting with their phones. You know, it's yeah. it's all kinds of stuff. Some people are sitting in old stuff from film days. Uh -huh. I should note about KJ. She is uh, a, also a facilitator at Photo oh, Jam. Yes, so. I, I help facilitate. <laughs> I have moved the, I've loved it so much that like Molly You've can't ranked get up. rid of me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, she can't get rid of me. She must see me like every week at least and I lead once a month right now just given my schedule uh -huh. but I lead usually the second to the last Thursday of the month in the jam so yeah so if you want some KJ come to the second to last Thursday of the jam there is no competition <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we believe that in art there is no best we can't compare each other we don't have any judgment we don't yep. have any contests and no politics that's my three rules. <laughs> no politics. Very important. Just, mm -hmm. Let's let's get here and be yep. subjective. So I don't want to start too late. Do you want to get started? Sure. Absolutely. So let's, let's go. I, I'm going to start this like it's jam. And um, what okay. I usually do at the beginning of the jam is I ask you to write something down. So if you have something to write with. 
Um, Molly, I have my new jam notebook. Oh, I just, I want this to be featured here. I bought my brownie notebook points. Yes, <laughs> that says photo jam on it. I, That's I am ready for it. And it's red. I have mine. <laughs> I, I, I'm if that's a plug I'm, I want one I, I want one okay I'll send you one <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna buy it but yeah <laughs> oh no I'll send you one so um right down I thought I couldn't think of a really good cue so what I thought was when, since we just finished the elements of design um jam journey I thought let's write those down before we start looking at these pictures and the elements of design, there's seven. And it's, I'm going from memory, line. So write that down. Are you writing this down in your head, Ken? I am because I, I'm <laughs> a digital it. guy. I never have phone or notepads near me. <laughs> but just remember the different elements of design are line, mm -hmm. shape, shape and form, color, Space. When you say line, you mean actual composition? Lines, just lines. Oh, period. Just in, yeah, lines. okay. Literally. What else? I mean, help me, KJ. I'm blanking. You know, you, you know line? that phenomenon when you ask somebody what the thing is, and then now my mind goes blank? That yeah. happens to me all the time. I will use my handy dandy Google to Google them. Handy dandy notebook. I know. I mean, I, we just did this whole thing. We had line, shape, and form, color, texture, texture. 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 That's a uh -huh. huge one. I'm going through neurofeedback, by the way, so it's helping my brain remember things past when it's said initially. So that's Tone, perfect. Tone that a little and value. Bit of, <laughs> Pattern. Is that seven? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, then we got them. Line, <laughs> shape, and form. Read them to me, John. Uh, the elements of design. Uh, lines, uh, shape and form, color, space, texture, tone, and pattern. Oh, okay. these are all things that my brain automatically remember. This, this is awesome. So. I am going to put I, this in my Trapper Keeper. Okay. Very nice. <laughs> Your Trapper Keeper. Okay, so as we go through these pictures, so I'm going to keep time, and mm -hmm. everyone's going to have about three minutes to talk about their photo. When it's your photo that's up, we're going to mute you. We will mm. give you a chance okay. to talk. So I don't know if you remember that from last time. I'm going to pull up. An oh, that's right, because I started talking, and you were like, meh. <laughs> I'm going to pull up an image and we can just say what you see say how it makes you feel see what elements of design you see in there are you okay. ready to go and I can share my screen so thank you Yay! I'm gonna awesome. do... sharing is caring sharing is caring all right I'm gonna start right here <laughs> I can't mute people. <laughs> You're gonna have to mute for us, Johnny. Oh, anyway. okay. Uh, who do you want me to meet, Ken? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll mute you for now, Ken. Ah, uh, it's great. <laughs> no sign language. No sign language. <laughs> Oh, I like the depth of that. Right? Yeah. Can, can you tell what this is? It's a truck. Yes. I'm assuming a big rig. But yeah. what I was thinking is what's so clever about the composition of this. I think those are flames. Yeah. And being at kind of eye level with this light, it looks like the flames are kind of going up through the light. And, and it's really playing with that that idea of space and how you're looking at the big rig because you have to get on eye level with that to see the flames like that and it really gives them some movement i like the warm colors of that uh fire yeah i, I was noticing that the 
the colors in this photograph are really half of the half and half. And oh, yeah. it's, it's kind of great that we have these two, um, the color wheel red or yeah, the orange and blue are opposites on the color wheel. Yeah. And the orange is like the bottom half pretty much. And the top is the blue is the top half. What do you notice about the lines in this photo? It has that perspective feel to it. It would the lines. The big rig acts as the leading line. Yes. And what are, photo. what are what are they pointing to for you? Like what's your anchor in mm. this? From what it looks like, it's where that smokestack is. It seems almost to where it's converging. Back here. Yeah. Back here. Down here. This kind of area. Yeah. It's interesting. So we have these great leading lines mm -hmm. here. Even the smokestack. This. Yeah. Here, there's another one here. We even have these kind of curved lines going up towards that center space. My eyes kind of competing with, is it the light or that area behind? So I'm kind of being brought in and out of this photo as I look at it. It's interesting because a classic photo of roads and highways is using those leading lines in the road and the highway. And that's kind of what this photo is doing, but with the big rig itself. So uh, to me, like, in, if you're thinking of like, you know, the annals of phot photography history and like typical shots that you see, it kind of harkens back to that, but in a really different way, because we're actually just using the big rig itself to to think about the road. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Interesting. I'm wondering oh. if this is, is that Johnny down there? I think that's Ken. <laughs> or that's Ken. Kenny. I'm sorry. Is that, <laughs> I love that. Is that him? <laughs> is that you, Ken? And, and Ken is wearing <laughs> the red orange color scheme also to kind of match the, the photo. That's awesome. Okay. Let's I, hear from, let's hear from Ken. I, can I say one more thing? Yeah. I'm gonna, this is cheating for jam. I probably should let you <laughs> end the timer. But the texture of that light, I'm obsessed with. I love that light. Like yeah. capturing like the light and the ridges on that, it's it's a, oh, a really sorry. nice texture. That's yeah. great. I think that's the focal point of it too, is the, he probably wants us to, you know, focus on the light. Can tell us, talk, unmute yourself and talk to us. All right, here we go. You All guys right. are brilliant. You guys literally just narrated my brain for that <laughs> shot. Um, I'm I'm a hyper realist type of photographer. <clears throat> so I love vivid, I love bold, and I love using my lines and I love manipulating the mind. And just the way you said, Molly, with um, making you focus in and out. So it's like, a for me, I'm creating, it's giving you the illusion that it's live, but it's not. It's making your brain create a, a um, you know how when you're in the, the new iPhone where you can do loop and you do the different effects? I'm uh -huh. creating that. I'm making your brain do that with your own mind. So in photography, we know that um, and if you don't know, it's center, center ground, foreground, background. So you're right. Lines are tying in. The smokestack is the center point. This is um, a, this is a probably 11 o'clock AM shot. I'm thinking um, this is Colorado. So it's not super sunny like California, but so the lighting is harsh, but not harsh enough to like not, it was, I, I took so many shots. It was just insane because I was taking advantage of the light. But the, fore, the foreground, obviously, is the light. And I love, like you said, KJ, I love the texture of those old school lights. This is a Kenworth 
It's an old school Kenworth. The company itself is a hundred year old company and the owner of the company still is, um, he's like second generation, but he is in that office, like right by the the thing. He's in that office. That's where oh. he works. He's a simple guy and that's his truck. <laughs> oh, that's cool. He parks well, it out I'm there gonna, like, like, I'm going to keep sorry. going. I'm going to keep going because I chose a couple pictures for everybody. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, not, my bad. It's, it has a no, lot of story no, background to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's keep moving on to the next picture. Are you ready? Ooh, ooh. I, I love, love the lines in this. Wow. Right. That that um that top area where you see the water separate because there's like a branch separate. It looks like an arrow. And then you got the you know right here. Oh, yeah, so it creates like an arrow coming down, and then it it hugs what looks like a mercury black abyss. Uh, um, that abyss, the blackness is so black, and it's just so gorgeous. It's but, like oil. It's so yeah, yeah, crispy. Yeah, like oil. Wow, such wow. a contrast. It is. And as far as patterns go, whew, okay. So you just named nice... one of the elements. Good. Actually, you named yeah. two. You the lines, and then you said pattern. The texture is amazing because of the actual corrugated um, texture. I want to say leaves or flowers, little mini flowers, right? The They're details so... of both are amazing, actually. And to the I right, love the black abyss. Yeah. The black abyss looks nice, but the you know the green uh, thing over there that the, you can see in in details they're 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 big they're small. I want to zoom in on one, and I, I don't know if I can. There's your pattern, right? Really yeah. great. Yeah. Be beautiful. And like yours, um, Ken. There's like half the picture is one color. It's very. Two colors. Yeah. Yeah. Dominating the photograph. And neither, I think, is more dominant than the other. And you have some blurring effects. So it it allows you to kind of dance around the shot because there's mm -hmm. focused shots, the focus points, blurred points where it needs to be focused, which is right where that the pattern is a little bit bigger and broken, mm -hmm. is where you can really capture the pattern. But you got this happy, you know, I'm a mental health guy, so <laughs> darkness <laughs> and light. This is a beautiful shot, and there's my dark side. You know, it's a very, it's a very bold shot. And to be able to capture it like that is very bold. Are you drawn more to, who, to the black or to the green? Which brings Ooh. you in more? I'm drawn more to the to the to the black because of the way it's it's um the way it makes your your eyes dance. Yeah, I have um, to agree with him on that too. Yeah. I I just can't get enough of that. I, I mean, of uh, it has so much in it like you almost see like looking at the clouds and seeing different shapes and yeah, it's really beautiful. We're giving everyone about three minutes. So, KJ. Thank you, guys. Uh, this is from the Bronx Botanical Gardens. And the oh. like. they have like a conservatory area where they have um, like different kind of ecospheres. And this was in the, the pond area. Mm -hmm. The water is, I, the bottom of it must be black because this is actually what it looks like. Like I didn't do any like color processing on this. Like this is purely... <laughs> what it looks like. I mean, I may have like upped the contrast a little bit just to, to highlight the, the, sh the highlights and the shadows in the water, but this is what it looks like. I am really into the idea of like that dark and light side of somebody's personality. Um, I think it's interesting if you were to go down that route and kind of analyze it, like thinking about these, um, rods that are kind of holding back the color from, from the, the darkness, like you could really 
really, I could go on a whole tangent about mental health wise and like psychoanalyzing that, that would be really fun. But I, I love that. Thank you guys. Hey, we got to we got to bring you on the mental health aspect because that's a very important aspect where you brought up about the mental health aspect of and that's probably why I agree because the darkness is a lot of work people don't talk about but this allows a person to see it and relate you know so that's yeah it's a it's a and, and your this is happening naturally your consciousness has to capture this and record it so that's yep amazing within itself so yeah thank you kj i'm gonna keep moving you ready Ooh. <laughs> i love that all these photos are so different i feel epic right now <laughs> epic right i feel like uh... I'm getting ready to leap over a tall building over a single bound or something. <laughs> that's uh, that's amazing. I this think is definitely like the power position, right? Like looking up at this building makes it when I talk about this sometimes, you know, when you look down on something it makes it look more vulnerable, seem more vulnerable when you're looking up. And this it's like massive. Makes it bigger. It's it's the lines leading to nowhere, which is different than like the lines in the truck leading to the, this massive heaping truck that gives you that sense of power with the truck. This is a different sense of power where you have your lines leading up to the sky, but you are kind of not really going where, anywhere with them. So you get this sense of the the sky and the massiveness that that has. Yeah, exactly. That that um that clear transparent uh, window has the bold lines but it looks like a salad plate and the building is the main course and then you got your textures so it has this you talk about your powerpoints everything that you mentioned is in this shot it's texture the color is grayscale but it your blues and your grayscales those are it's like you're happy in your darkness same thing as the last shot it's 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 mm -hmm. like a your, it's like your darkness looking up at the light, you know? Wow. That's, yeah. That's a very that's... powerful, it's a very powerful shot. And then you got the literal lights in there shining back down to the darkness, you know? So oh, it's, it's, so I'm hearing very... the words, I'm hearing the words massive. I'm hearing the words power. I'm hearing these things. And what, what is it that makes this photograph feel so great in those two words massive and powerful like what is do you think is making it feel that way to you man the the to be honest with you it is it is the smallest thing we know it's the biggest thing in real life but it's the smallest thing well you can it you can feel yourself at the bottom of this n knowing how magnet magnificent what you're looking at is, even though it's the smallest thing in the shot, your brain wants to go more places. Right, right. What is the element, the dominating element of design here? We talked about the lines leading to nowhere and the texture, I think you said, and I've almost run out of time, but I want to, for me, it's shape and form. And I'm seeing this like, very, you know, we have these very rec not rectangular shapes. We don't have a lot of triangles going on here. It's all very rectangular and heavy. It feels heavy. Where angles, more diagonal and triangles would be a little bit more dynamic. There are no flowy, no circular lines like that. This is very heavy with its shape. And with that, Johnny. Yes, I uh, I took this uh, at about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was able to uh, bring my vis visitors, my friends who were visitors, and they were just uh, getting to tour around that. That is actually the Willis Tower, which is known to everyone as the Sears Tower. <gasps> and you get to see a, a contradiction of it as you are looking at the picture. And right now look at the light that's reflecting on it. We always see the tower you know in its black colors 
And you get to see it from this perspective because all the time, you, whenever you see it on TV or anywhere, you always see it like really tall. Mm, that's a that's a great point. You almost see it like the way a kid looks at a parent. Right. Oh, that's you're, good. you're like this parent is this huh. towering authoritative figure and I'm a worm looking <laughs> up at a giant. You know, that's <laughs> another um, and that's a thing that I've learned to do is bring myself down to my son's level um, so I can communicate with him because we do seem a little more intimidating. So this is a great way to depict this. That's yeah, just, beautiful. John. Just Thank notice you. how all that, the the, uh, the colors of this building is actually dark, even to the things on the right. That was all dark. But with the light reflecting on it, it just brings so much uh, texture to it as you're looking at it. It's fantastic. Let me keep going. Ooh. Ooh. Anheuser Bush. <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> this is another power shot. This is like if we were to do like power poses today, that's what all these photos are. Yeah, feel like. man. We're we're hitting tens today. Wow. That dust kicking up, just you can tell that you can feel the energy. That's what's crazy. This is a still shot and you can feel the energy in it. It's crazy. What elements do you feel like give it energy? Like the dust is definitely like that motion. Are there any elements of design that also make you feel energy in this? I want to say the 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 uh, positioning of the legs yeah. um, straddled and the actual heads Mm -hmm. literally almost in a perfect um, spiral down gives it the fact that they almost posed for the shot and did a pose. It's crazy. <laughs> this is an insane capture of everything happening at once. It's insane. And then the trees almost go dive in with it. It dives it, down yeah. right into the dust like a bow. Yeah. It's, it's a shape. Is, I I'm hearing yeah. that's a lot of shape, a lot of shape. And I don't know, like maybe a little bit of line or pattern in there. Just the way that the heads kind of repeat gives it that energy too of like movement and moving down the line and continually moving through the photo. And then you have a purple flower that's just saying, hey, look at me. I'm going to just be random and be a pop color. I don't even know. It might be a dandelion or something, but um, that's right in the middle of a of a V between like it, it's insane how this was composed. Also, the one horse in the middle is posing for the camera quite literally. Like the <laughs> they didn't get pointed. training. <laughs> they don't. Do, do they? Is that possible for a horse to possibly? Because <laughs> this is too 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 coordinated. This is a little too coordinated. What I would call it is uh, just to go back to photography terms, like the decisive moment. I don't know yeah, if anybody's. True. Yeah. No, should you're I, right. Should I explain that or do you want to explain it? Should we explain it? You you know what? You, since you brought up, you explain it because <laughs> the, here's the thing. I, I, I try my best not to go into my education because it might intimidate people and all that stuff. And I don't like to do that. I just love to shoot. But since you bring it up, that decisive moment is what makes composition. So yeah, go ahead, explain. I like that term, even though it's like a technical term, but I like it because for me, that's a lot of photography. And it really just means like being in the moment at the right time, the right place and seeing that shot and being able to capture it with, with the way that it's composed. And it was taken from a very famous photographer. But I think for me, that's like the excitement and surprise of photography is like being at the moment seeing this horse turn its head to you, seeing them be in this composition and being able to see it, grab it and, and capture it. And that's what I was mentioning before. And that dark light shot with the, um, I'm not, I, Arboretum is what's coming to my head. It's a garden. Um, it is, it is what I, again, the positive side of Mr. Morley and the Morley barometer is what made me be able to do this. You have to make, you have to look at 10,000 different things, make sure your F-stop and all that is happening for it to happen. But on the positive side about this, 
You don't have to be that person. You just have to see what you see and what you see is what it is. You don't have to be judged by this. You know what I mean? Because you bring something else when you don't seat yourself in what would be the norm for composition. So that's, yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for, this is my photograph and I appreciate that you. That is nice. It's, Thank it's, you. uh, it's, it's magnificent. <laughs> Where's magnificent. that at Molly, by the way? This is in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh, so you just saw Lancaster. horses one day and you're like, well, you know, outside of the city, I live in town, but outside of the city, there's this. Mm -hmm. It's an Amish country. There's a, I mean, this was a, probably pulling a plow and they don't um, love to be photographed. Uh -huh. so, so I was focusing on the horses, trying not to be obnoxious, but I was probably obnoxious. It doesn't matter because <laughs> I got <laughs> shot. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm really doing terrible keeping my time here. So no, it's I, okay. You know, I'm going to go over, but I'm going to keep moving. Well, remember this, even though photo jam is, you know, this is the block. So the, the, the block, relaxed, right? fun aspect, if we go over, we, we it all balances out. So Okay. So. Mm. This is fantastic. Isn't that great? Lollipop, I lollipop, oh, lolly, lolly. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what the heck is this at first? The more I look <laughs> at it. Straight out. What the heck is this? <laughs> um, this is it, disturbing. <laughs> well, I think I, you have to be quiet, Ken. Oh, oh, okay. oh. oh we got to put you back on mute, Ken. Put him oh. back up here. He's sorry. <laughs> that's, that's what we've been exploring in abstract cause trips is just it, like your brain wants to make sense of literally everything and so when every time I look at a photo my brain's like what is this can you figure it out like and I spend so much time doing that and so I've been trying to step away from that and not try to figure photographs out anymore and just look at them for what they are um because I have to fight my brain on that I like I like order and I like figuring things out and it's really it's really hard even though I think I might know what it is now that I've looked at it for for a few minutes but um i don't know what it is i can't tell it don't tell me because i won't say anything i'm loving the lines the repetition yeah. i really have the sure. shape what were you gonna say john oh i was just agreeing with you <laughs> yeah. look at the light that's emanating from the bottom left yeah it's really yeah. it's it's got texture. That light really amplifies the texture mm -hmm. in the background and on the subject. But if you just take it, I like how you said that, KJ, just taking it for the composition without trying to figure it out. So what's interesting, and I think we could maybe talk about the elements that have helped this. I think, so the lines are very like pointed and, um, they feel like harder, but this photograph doesn't feel harsh. Like I think there's a way that if you could, you could take this photograph and it could look really harsh, yeah. but I feel like there is a juxtaposition between kind of these like pokey stick things and making them feel soft. And um, I'm trying to think of whatever emotions I feel when I see this, it, it doesn't feel harsh though, which I feel like sometimes feel like photographing things like this can feel. Wow. You know what it reminds me of? I've got yeah. it. You're looking like in a movie and you're looking at a boat, like a boat that's a ship that's going into the unknown. And you're looking at like the masts that are kind of poking into like the the mist of of the unknown in the sea. That's what it reminds me of with that light at the bottom. It just it gives it this um this mystery and this slight sense of adventure about it because you're not really yeah. sure what, what it is, where it's going, what it's doing. It's kind of floating off to the left. Yeah. I like that. Ken, you can talk now. <laughs> Let me unmute you, you, you have about a talk, minute. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I love um I love the feedback on shots like this. Um, because these are the shots I don't share because again, everybody's in point and shoot mode and shooting whatever i go into the art side of things and the mind bending things and then 
and I go to show them, they're people either go, oh, they're just they go, oh, that's nice or something. So I just kind of leave those out. So I present things that are probably more easy to digest. But uh, this is a macro shot of guess what? Just uh, just three guesses. I have Everybody no idea. Guess. Is it like like a mirror or a piece of art that has like the spikes? I don't know any other word for it other than spikes but that sounds harsh but rubes what is your thoughts uh is it truck related <laughs> <laughs> is it <laughs> it actually is truck related so that uh, i'll bring yeah. so so kj you are spot on it's a mirror it's a sun mirror mm. oh it's a sun mirror with little mirrors so there's a middle is a it's it's at a hotel so right. it's very mid-century art deco um that's the hotel light because i love um ambient hotel lights or any lights like they have right now mm -hmm. and i exactly the way you explained it, i wanted to make this very porcupine disturbing thing look majestic because uh, it is majestic but you can't make it unless you have the light bouquet mm -hmm. and softening it enough to understand you can tell the mirrors because you can see that the curtains are in the oh. pattern of the mirrors yeah. so then you can tell if you start macro sites are amazing because they actually do it a lot i forget what show it is but they'll or a radio station they'll show a little bit of it and then you have to guess what it is but i love macro shots because it's a it's like quantum physics it's a whole nother world of a subatomic level of mm. thought uh, and then you yeah. Yeah. So if I had showed you the actual mirror, it wouldn't have had the same effects. I was going to give another one, but I was like, nah, this one is going to be the one. So it's, it's, um, everything you guys said is exactly amazing for a shot like this, where most would go just be confused and kind of just tap yeah. out. So, so it's abstract photography. I love it. Thank very you. abstract. Yeah. Right, Ken, thank you for sharing. Right, thank you. Tiptoe through the window. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> I know. <it's> just... <laughs> that don't even look like <laughs> that looks like something might happen. <laughs> well, so to get this shot, presumably there's another one of those, or there's a tram situation. Like, like I'm curious how this shot was taken and what the whole setup is here. You're you're definitely a um a mind major because <laughs> mind majors always wonder how the shot happened in the first place. Like, wow. Right. That's true. We want to like, that is so you take a death pose too. <laughs> this is a wonderful composition. I love how how we have all these different layers. And for me, the focal point is the people going across and that's where it gets really colorful. We also have the repetition of the, the pattern of people. And behind them, they're kind of embraced by the clouds from the top and the little town from below or city. I don't, I don't know where this is, but there's a lot of, a lot of the elements of design in this photograph. It, it has that that sense of depiction of human trust and engineering. Uh, you got your lines that the clouds lead in and it zigzags. So you got your clouds yeah. zigzagging, then the bridge zigzags like a Z. Then you got oh, your yeah. little lines at the bottom. Um, th then you got your building in the fort, you know, in the very, um, I'm sorry, background. Your foreground would be those lighter greens, but you got your zigzags and then you got the human bridge of trust and engineering. <laughs> it's like, that yeah. is, um, that is a marvelous shot. <laughs> yeah. Those cables are really like, those cables can be easily forgotten when you're looking at a scene like this. Cause like, look at the background, but this shot really True. makes those cables and that bridge the star versus like the trees necessarily. And I think that's so clever to take a shot like this and actually focus on something different. Um, it's it's really good. It's a that's a good point. Molly. 
It's a squinter. Oh, I'll squint at it. That's it, a good point with the lines. Yeah. Yeah, they usually get they usually drown out. And yeah. some people would usually edit them out because it is annoying to see a line. But yeah. leaving them in there shows oh, yeah. the magnitude of what's happening. That's actually that is clever not to edit I, them out. I think the and lines are zigzag out. too. The zigzag like brings your eye through the photo really nicely. I'm, I love that you pointed that out. Sorry, Molly. Oh, no, that's a good point. I, I like how it does that too. And I think the mountain kind of adds to that Z, just the, not the, not the line of the top cable, but this, this, yeah. You see it. And then the bottom cable. Yeah. It, it like kind of, it's so the, it, it's look like it's hugging the mountain and the, the foreground tree is hugging the scene in a Z. The people. Yeah. Yeah. It's hugging the people and the buildings kind of this, like, like levitating over a building that's much more taller than them. It's kind of funny. Johnny, talk to us. That right there is the greater, Great Smoky Mountains. And on the bottom there is Gatlinburg. <gasps> yep. <Tennessee. laughs> and this is at Tennessee. the uh, Sky Bridge. And uh -huh. it is a very long bridge. And if you ever wound up in the middle, it, it, there is a transparent. <laughs> Uh, it gets kind of scary. You get to see it, uh, you know, there's a transparent, uh, it's like a window when you're walking and some people don't like to look down. Uh, so it's almost like you're on the top of the Willis Tower and you're going on a transparent ledge and you're looking down. But for, you know, for just because, um, uh, because of the fact that it is transparent, I did overcome my fear thanks to the Willis Tower, but I was able <laughs> to walk through it while I was awesome. able to look down. And uh, by the way, did you notice about the lighting on the on the uh, tree in front? That's actually the sunlight at the time that was peering through. Wow. Nice. I, yeah, I noticed that. I noticed how much more brighter that was. I was like, either that's a, a you know a saturation or vibrance or in in shot um, composition. Wow, the fact that you can zoom in and see faces is insane. I love it. I love it. They're my favorite part. I love the people. I'm going to keep going, y'all. Okay. <laughs> that, Thanks, thank guys. you, John. You're welcome. Well, this is super interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the The line from the side is like, it, you know, in in photography, usually it's called tension, where there's a you you, you make a decision to either edit it out or leave it in. But this one kind of leans, and then it does a half pipe U right into the scene and says, "Hey, bingo." <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's wow. And then it's their view. It's like they're. Yeah, shot with their sunglasses or something. It's almost perfect, um, dead on view of the the um scene. Wow. Do you think that tension and the line gives? I feel like it gives me more of a sense that we're looking at it from that perspective. Because I feel like if it was straightened up, I it would just look like somebody took it. But because it's kind of like it's it's at an angle. Like I feel like I'm sitting in this presumably lady's head and looking at the bingo card, you know, like I feel That's like exactly, you, know, you took the words right in my head. Yeah. Like, I'm right near her head. Have you seen being John Malkovich? You know, I don't know if anybody has seen oh, I haven't yet. that or remembers mm. that it's an old film, but where they, they basically can get behind John Malkovich's eyes. There's a tunnel to his brain and subconscious. It's a, it's an interesting film, but you can like look through his eyes like this. And this is what this reminds me of. If I like got to just like, transport myself into this lady's brain i love that actual stuff in, in cinematography where they use the um first person shooter view is what i would, would call it yeah. um that's why that tension is not like you said if you were editing and you just kind of use the crop to straighten it out then then it's just that it's almost like that move make the shot moves in your brain so you could put you in her brain mm -hmm. I wonder if she it's got bingo. Of, <laughs> she's, I know she's pretty. She's getting close. Like, I right. Like, <laughs> I like the colors too because most everything else is like browns, black, 
blacks, whites, and then you have like the pops of the, the the bingo tiles. I don't know what you technically call them, but the tiles and then her fingernails are painted. But like those those colors and those bingo tiles are really nice. I like the, re you know the what? light that's reflecting on the table. Yeah, the, it's a very yeah. subtle, soft one. Well, y'all notice everything. This is my photo. Oh. And I just had to put it in here because this is my grandma. Oh, okay. And yesterday was her birthday. And she is Happy birthday to your grandma. Thank Happy you. birthday. 104. Oh, no way. Yeah. So my sweet grandma. I love her Playing so much. Playing bingo. That's awesome. Bingo, of course. I would say that is a bingo in of a, in and of itself. <laughs> <laughs> right. That is. And she's just this wonderful old Ukrainian lady. And I, yeah, my favorite person. Was that taken today? No, this was taken a couple months ago, maybe. Oh, okay. Did she bingo? That's the question. Did she win? I don't remember. <laughs> sure That's actually one of my uh, one of my life goals is to get to 108. So I'm gonna have to, you know, oh, talk boy. to her about how to get that far. <laughs> I'll tell you her secret. She laughs all the time. She's always happy. She she just glass completely full. Uh, so. Well, I'm on to something. Then. <laughs> we have we have another one, right? And also, I liked the how her this her wrinkles in her hands were kind of echoing in the table but that was i was going to say that i was going to say that um this the liver i think it's liver spots right in her hand mm -hmm. they actually literally go with a pattern so it doesn't it, it's yeah it's a very it's it's like a human the human versus material yeah. juxtaposition happening very majestically yeah, I don't remember what we have left. Let me see. Are we? We have mine. Oh, yes. That's right. This is the last one, I think, right? I, I want to say 9-11, a building crash and there's smoke going on. Or <laughs> a I, explosion. I, I chose this photo just because there's so much to look at. And... Yeah. It's like where does where does your eye begin and end? Where does it start? Where does it stop? Yeah, you can you can actually if if you're cropping, you can just keep cropping and have new pictures. You can get twenty pictures out of this shot. Mm -hmm. Again, another with like the horse scene. There's the dust kicking up is the motion. Yeah, we have. And, and it, on the left end, I'm trying to see. So there's this kind of smoky, steamy, kind of per pervasive through the photograph. And then we have it here as well. But I mean, it doesn't it feel like it's throughout the photo? Yeah. Is that the sun's rays? So here it feels like it's the sun's rays. It feels like, like, a dangerous scene happening and everybody's calm. Like it's not, there's, yeah. there's something, something dropped or exploded. Everybody's like, yeah, this is normal. Like no big deal. I'm like, uh, the steam's not bothering me. I love me that yet. steam light effect there on the left. Wow. Yeah. And we have it this is beautiful. little sunburst over here. Mm -hmm. And then on this side, we have some trash. It looks like but if you give it a squint, what is your, what do you see mostly? What is your anchor when you give it a squint? Are you referring to the tra trash or? No, I'm referring to the whole composition. What jumps out at you when you give it a squint? Mm, see the, vein, the veins in the trees. <laughs> yeah, I like mostly. The lines are pretty much, you know, where the, the tree and then the line in the middle of it and then the, the person on the bike or same. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it's, it's they're so parallel me, to each other. I see the three things. I see the bicycle. He's mm -hmm. a very, very strong. Oh, that's and the pole. OK, the middle one is the pole in front of the tree. This one? Yeah, that's I was wondering what that middle line was there. 
Yeah, I'm it's like the it's like the truck where everything leads right into the those balloons or is it balloons? Oh no, it's a light, but it looks like balloons. The light actually yeah, turns yellow, like but everything everything sucks into that first that car in front of the white one right into the light or into those people that are in front of the pole. Everything sucks into that little point. So I feel like this photograph is about the light and the steam and how the light affects everything else. And the people in the background, they're just like the sprinkles on top of the cupcake and the trash here, you know, those are like the sprinkles that make, give it a little bit more interest or a lot more interest. But I feel like this guy on the bike and the, the tree, the shadows, the light is the star of the show here for me. You see that the, uh, the, 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 um the rocky texture to the right of the guy, you see when it's like in the steam uh, lighted area, it's different compared Over to the, yeah. to that one. You see more detail right past him. Okay, zoom in and see what's happening here before we. If I, if I zoomed in like a thousand times, people will think that's the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right about the light. That light is a star to show. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that it's, it's so rich that you you want to just focus more than just what the, the you know the this like when you look at shots with sunbursts you you go oh my god that's amazing yeah. but this shot oh my god is amazing but what's that what's that you, like your brain's going I want to look at this amazing light but I want to figure out what this is over here there's so much to talk about in this so talk to us Kate Katie Joy. Well, welcome to my neighborhood. This is the park across the street uh, from where we live. And it's the summertime. And so in the summertime, there are tons of people who come to the park and barbecue. That <laughs> smoke is purely oh. from barbecues, which <laughs> wow. I find fascinating because you're right. It's insane. Like it is so much smoke that you would like wow. think that we were like lighting on fireworks but it's from barbecues and so I wanted to capture it because as you're walking so we were walking my dog and like as you're as you're cat capturing that like you're just like it's just basically light and smoke out here and like it just looks so otherworldly um so that's <laughs> that's the start of the dystopian show. And then, <laughs> yes um and uh -huh. and you know there's like music going like it's actually really exciting and fun but then this guy ended up like getting into my shot and and driving through it and I was like that's perfect I love that because it's just that's what it feels oh. like it's just it is chaos but it's exciting chaos not in a bad way but that is what it feels like it's like your brain is going all these different places like you're like why is why is there an explosion right now in this beautiful shot <laughs> yeah I think that's I that's the last one. Let me just double check. Yeah, it feels like yeah, it feels like there could be a war zone, except everyone looks so happy. Well, you it would, depends. You would, I guess. Think... I, it... <laughs> go ahead. No, I was gonna no. say you would think that people would go. Hmm, this is a little bit too many people's barbecuing. I'm gonna go to another side. This, I guess, it's where everybody knows there's gonna be a lot of barbecuing, so they just get used to that much amount of smoke in one area. So they just barbecue with them. Yep, it's, it's a whole thing. I love it, KJ. Thanks. I would say it's a war zone for whatever meat's being cooked. That would be my joke for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop the share and the, oh, that was as we say at the jam. That's the jam, y'all. <laughs> that's the jam. Last jam. <laughs> Let's settle down. Yeah, that's a, that was an go. amazing session. Yeah, yeah thank you. It, I'm just six minutes over. Oh yeah, not bad. We, <laughs> not we still bad. haven't broken the record. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to break the record. <laughs> My eyeballs will fall out. Look at it. So many great pictures. So thank you guys. Oh, you're no very problem. welcome. Thank you, thank you yeah, for it, having um, me. I, I definitely you're see welcome. I, I, it's already obvious the talent that's in this podcast right now. So I I think I, I I think I said it last time, but there's a lot always going on in our lives. But I I definitely see myself uh, taking more of my stuff and exercising in the photo jam sessions like this because it is very enriching to be able to talk about photography the way we the way we all talk about them. Perspectives are very important. 
it's really mm. it's really a wonderful space and photography there's no one that's i mean like i said before we don't compare ourselves to each other because we're all on our own journey everybody is at their own place it's like saying um i don't know i don't know how to compare it it's like you can compare it to yoga i guess is where i am it doesn't matter where you are on your mat you're all on that same journey right you could be a beginner you could be a professional but it doesn't mean that the professional is better than the beginner or it's all just different it's, everybody has their own unique visual voice and that's what we want to see and that's what we celebrate we celebrate all of it well where can the unique people um celebrate themselves um on the jam the photo the jam. jam you can find us at photojam.net and if you want to check it out, there's a lot of little lessons that you can do. They're free. They're Some are free um, in the learn section. And if anybody wants to drop into a jam, you can come to your first jam for free using the code first jam. Is that F-I-R-S-T jam? F I Thank you. It's not okay. the one. It's, the, it's a <laughs> F-I-R-S-T-J-A-M at photojam.net. And drop into hey, our jams. Rubes, are you able to bring it, bring up the um, website? Um, oh, I sure. I'm probably when I when I edit this whole thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So as we're talking, people are probably seeing it right now on the finish. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. They're jamming themselves. They're like, oh man, set my game up. I feel like pictures. we should <laughs> we should do this more often. We should do this like once a quarter or something it's really been great to know you guys and hang out with you on the in the virtual world yeah it was um, an honor for you to request to <laughs> come back you and know like, ken we, and we, we ken and i just talked about this uh before we went on air here uh is that we're thinking about you know doing you know photo critiquing like on a regular basis on, on our show we're gonna try to carry on what photo jam has taught us what you all have taught us here tonight and we're just gonna keep looking awesome. at each other's works and, and with, with these elements of design that we've that I've listed here. So yeah, we'll, we'll right. definitely pay attention a okay. lot more. Well, come you should come on at one of our journeys. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. is it like you said every Thursday? We meet every every Thursday. Okay. We have a featured journey right now, and right now we're going through abstract photography mm -hmm. and so each week we're delving into a different piece of abstract photography and every week you get an assignment a little lesson some master inspiration and then we come together on thursdays and share our work and get feedback so just like this so oh, everyone is great. actually going out and live capturing these shots and bringing them to the table People are going out and photographing, but oftentimes if you don't have time that week or whatever, you might just look through your archives and say, you know, this really fits the bill and oh, got bring it. it to the jam. But everything is welcome. There are no, there's no hard rules at Photo Jam, except for those three that I talked about. No judgment, no contest, no politics. You can bring anything <laughs> to Photo Jam. Somebody's like bringing Ansel Adam pictures. Wait a minute, this looks like... It is. I didn't have any other things. So here's your own. Own. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I guess that's a rule. It's that's why I brought that up. Because some people would just bring some other photography like, <laughs> like, hey, this is not yours. I know that's Ansel Adams. No, that's not you yours. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you could literally take your iPhone or whatever phone you have, Google Pixel, like the day before the jam, go like <clears throat> outside, take some photos and send them, upload them on our on the form for the, for the jam. And that's totally fine. Like it doesn't, there's no, there's not like a bar for it. Like you could, you know, you could do old stuff, new stuff, whatever it is. You could take an old photo and crop it in a different way, which I have done and played around with different compositions like, like that. It's all, it's all up for grabs. I didn't say the photo that I took of my grandmother playing bingo was with my iPhone. Oh, and you, you did that right behind her. On top of our oh, okay. <laughs> um, all my shots are iPhone shots, all of them. Awesome. Wow. Are they? <laughs> You're lying. No, I'm I'm not joking. Oh, that's great. That's great. I, I just I know how to bend light. Um, because if you look at a iPhone or any phone, it's recording light. But with iPhones, 
mostly iPhones, you have to make sure your lighting is right. And then you can make it look like it was shot DSLR. But with a Samsung, Samsung seems to be a photographer's type, you know, it's like a Galaxy Ultra, um, like that. But um, yeah, with iPhone, if you go into a low light situation, there's nothing you can truly do except bring yeah. in your own light. Um, yeah. But I'm going to give you guys a little bonus little round here. Favorite style of photography. <clears throat> Everybody go. <laughs> oh, not all at once. <laughs> I love photography. So I, can, I can see styles. I can see styles in everybody's uh, stuff. And I, I kind of gave away mine, but I'm always interested what everybody's kind of favorite lean when they're in their style. I'll go, of I'll go first. I'll, I'll tread into the water first. I <laughs> like conceptual photography. I like to come up with concepts and yeah. execute them and like think about ways to ex mm. explore like feelings or portray a song or a poem or like whatever it is I just decide to go but I like to I like there to be some meaning and background to it and put a lot of thought even if it's just for myself um that's for me what I I kind of poured into the photograph awesome I, I've actually that's a very very good one because I never thought about the actual you know the concept of something so yeah great storytelling I like, I like photographing people in their natural habitat and horses. You do a really good job at horses who do not want to be <laughs> that, was, that, that was, was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I would say there's you are a you're a horse photographer whisperer. No, I, I am not. That one. <laughs> no, that was a one-off. One one <laughs> but thank Rubes, you. Rubes, what about you, buddy? Uh as for me, I like angular photography. Uh, especially with the 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 marriage of the lightness and darkness and trying to balance it out. But I just definitely love to see it in a different angle compared to how I see it in, from my own eyes. Sometimes I like to play with how I'm like turning the camera in a certain way. I like, Ooh. yeah. You I know, mean, sometimes, funny. sometimes it looks, you know, uh, different than what you see in the eyes. Like this part could be bigger than what's seen here on the bottom because I, I was moving it in a certain position. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Love that building. That building was really. Yeah. It, it I'm was surprised that you shot, said yeah. you were afraid of heights. I like, Taking those two photos together, I was going to say, you must really like heights. Like that oh. to me was pretty shocking. <laughs> you're, you're probably, okay. You're probably wondering how I took that shot with the bridge. Uh, yeah. I was actually down uh, with my friend and I get to take it like from there. So uh, as I got off the bridge, I was able to go around and which I did around, you know, past that bridge. Oh. There's, a, there's a part where you can just walk freely and just go around oh. in a circle. Yeah. I swear you're going to say drone. I, 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 gonna say I know. Drone. I was going to say, like, I, that's what I thought. It definitely could be a drone shot. Don't yeah. Get near I mean, that I, yeah. I've taken some drone shots. Ken's, seen my, Ken's has seen my drone shots. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, cool. yeah. So you're a Superman or you got a drone or you're in love dangerous positions like I do. Because <laughs> I, I, I'll go wherever to get the shot. And I've been told, oh, my God, you're going to die. But if I die and I get a shot, I'll be on Time Magazine, won't I? <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for having me tonight and kj i really appreciate it well, thanks thank everyone you for wanting to actually do this again it's it's yeah. actually a treat for us that we are we're digital media guys at at heart um so yeah. Yeah. thank you for your comfortable one to come back on you know that's awesome <laughs> yeah i think Part you guys three. are great so <laughs> yeah well, let me know <laughs> and come to the jam Oh, Come yeah. To, you know? Yeah, we got to owe you the favor of coming to the gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anytime. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah, two times, two times, three times, come to the gym. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a great time. I mean, it's intellectual joy for me. It's meditation. It's what it feels like. You know, you hyper focus on these photos and you really kind of forget about the rest of the world for an hour. It's nice. Yeah. Well, Rubes, take us home, brother. Yeah, take us home. Take us home. Thank you guys very much for uh, being a part of this uh, podcast episode tonight. It was awesome. It was good to get in a photo, uh, photo jam session uh, firsthand uh, from Katie Joy and Molly once again. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming in and we'll uh, probably do another one again soon. Part three, maybe. Thanks. Click, <laughs> like, follow, subscribe to 2400 yeah. Block Podcast. 
they feel comfortable come back on, you should feel comfortable to stay on and come back on too. So thank you guys. Yeah, don't forget guys to um to check out Photo Jam. All right. I'm talking to the people out there uh watching this. So yeah, check out photojam.net. Peace. All right, have a good night, guys. Bye. 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 Thanks for checking out this episode of 2400 Block Podcast. Don't forget to follow and subscribe.